Hi there and welcome back to What's the Story. This is the second time I'm going to try and record this. We had the computer fall down before and then I got a coughing fit. So I didn't think you'd really want to see that. Today I'm going to read The Very Sleepy Bear and it's by Nick Bland. Now he is the author of The Cranky Bear, which I have here at home along with a few of the other books in this bear series. And I'll be reading those all to you, but let's get going with this one. Winter had come early and Bear was running late. He was feeling very sleepy and it was time to hibernate. He hurried down the mountain past the icy rocks and never even noticed a rather sneaky fox. At last he reached his cosy cave and just in time for bed. Then Fox appeared from nowhere. Good afternoon, he said. I couldn't help but notice that your cave is very small. There's hardly any room in here to hibernate at all. A great big bear like you, said Fox, so big and strong and brave. A creature so magnificent deserves a bigger cave. A bigger cave for me, oh, yawned Bear. Perhaps you could be right. I must admit this cave is getting rather tight. Today's your lucky day, said Fox. I've just the cave for you. I'll even help you pack, he said. I've nothing else to do. So Bear picked up his suitcase and he gave a little wave and left his cosy home behind to find a bigger cave. Forget your little cave, said Fox. This huge one could be yours. There's heaps of room to hibernate. It even got two doors. It's absolutely waterproof, free from snow and rain. And once a day at two o'clock, you get to see a train. Fox was smiling nervously and Bear just shook his head. I'm feeling really sleepy. I'm going home, he said. But you're so very big, said Fox, and your cave so very small. You really need a bigger cave, a cave that's nice and tall. This one's made of solid wood and not a train in sight. And never mind the bats, said Fox. They'll all go out at night. Fox was smiling nervously and Bear just shook his head. I'm feeling very sleepy. I'm going home, he said. But wait, there is another cave, if that one's not for you. It's got a sandy floor, said Fox, and a lovely ocean view. I'll take it, said the sleepy bear, and shook the fox's hand. He took his favourite pillow out and curled up in the sand. But just as bear was nodding off, Inside his brand new cave, there came a splishy, splashy sound. And then there came a wave. Bear was cold and cranky and very, very tired. He packed his little suitcase up. I'm going home, he sighed. When Bear arrived back home at last, ready for his bed, Fox and all his little friends were living there instead. Oh, please don't throw us out, said Fox. We're all so very small. You'd hardly ever notice that we're living here at all. Well, today's your lucky day, said Bear, as he lay upon the floor. Wake me up in spring, he said. And by the way, I snore. <laughs> And look, they've all had to sort of go outside the cave a little bit, but Fox is now under the suitcase. What a tricky fox trying to trick Bear out of his cave. I hope you enjoyed that story. Can't wait to read you another one. See you later. Bye.